good day everybody guess what today is my husband ron rayfield's birthday and so i thought i would surprise him with his ultimate all-time favorite dish that we've ever made on the channel here early american frontier patriot absolute favorite and that is a chocolate tart from 1800 this 200 plus year old recipe was published in the complete confectioner over 200 years ago Ron is not that old, but it is his birthday today. I wanted to surprise him. We've only ever had this tart once ever. And so this is gonna be the second time I've ever made it, but still to this day, it's been over a year and he cannot stop talking about this tart. I remember it was really good too. I'm gonna make it again for you guys, um, kind of quickly this time. And I hope that you at home can try it as well because man, this is one of the best desserts I've ever tried. And so I have my pot here. And to get started, the recipe, or receipt as it used to be called, says that we have to combine cream with the yolks of five eggs. This is going to be rich. This ain't diet food. I mean, it's chocolate tart. What do you expect? But this definitely is not some diet food. Now that our cream is in our cooking pot, it wants me to add a dash of milk, maybe to thin it out a little bit. So that was just maybe two tablespoons worth of milk, no more, you want this to be real rich. Speaking of real rich, five egg yolks. Okay, here we go. My least favorite thing to do is just to sit here and... That yolk wants to come out, okay. <laughs> Our last egg yolk, rice flour, salt, and of course sugar. Now whisk that all together until it's smooth and the eggs are evenly dispersed. Now we are going to heat it up on low heat for about five to seven, maybe up to 10 minutes. And we want to constantly whisk it during this time. We don't have the chocolate in it yet. That happens a little later. But the point of heating it up first is we gotta dissolve this sugar because right now it's grainy. So let's go ahead and hang that in my hearth. You don't want it to come to a raging boil. You definitely don't want that, but you want it to start steaming and make sure you stir very frequently. about five minutes. This is definitely hot enough. The sugar is dissolved and so now I'm going to very quickly add in our chocolate and just let it naturally melt in there. I did cheat a little bit, and I did it as an experiment, but the recipe, the original one, says to put in grated chocolate. I just took a chocolate bar and chopped it with my hands into really tiny little chunks to see if I could get away with that. It would be easier, and sure enough, it melted right away. Now, random fact for you, if you go to Google and you just Google when were chocolate bars invented, it'll say 1840-something. Uh, that's not completely accurate because we have advertisements from the mid-18th century advertising the sale of bars of chocolate. 
the problem is, is when you Google things like that, when was this invented, when was that invented, it will, like for chocolate, for example, it'll tell you when chocolate snack bars were invented. Like think Hershey's or Snickers or a Twix bar or something like that. That's a snack bar. But in this time period, pre-1840, they did have chocolate bars, but they were baking bars. They were not meant to just be eaten straight off. I mean, I'm sure some little kids snuck it, but they were baking bars. They were, chocolate was usually sold as bars. And so you can use whatever type of chocolate you want for this recipe, but if you're wanting something more accurate and something more delicious, you really have to use a spiced chocolate because bars of chocolate in the early 1800s were almost always spiced. They were very rarely sold plain. That would be an inferior chocolate. Now, when I say spiced, I mean they were sold with cinnamon and nutmeg and clove and chili powder in it. And they were very complex, very complex notes besides just the chocolate. Modern baking bars are very plain. It's just chocolate, milk, and sugar. So this one that I picked up today, it has all the cool stuff in it, like I just said, but it also has orange zest in it as well. And I have not tried that yet with this recipe, maybe giving it a little orange flavor, but I thought that would taste really good. So when I saw it, I said, hmm, I'm gonna try that out. I'm gonna try it out right now. Because I have to wait for this to cool before I pour it into our pie paste. Oh, that's good. That's really, really good. And I do taste a little bit of the orange that I got from that chocolate. Oh, Ron's gonna like that. Hi everybody, welcome back to Frontier Patriot for a very special Chew and Chat. Today is my birthday. birthday. And we're here with <laughs> a chocolate tart, or it's called a chocolate tart, but this looks like a pie. A chocolate pie. Mm. Mm. <laughs> we're here at one of my favorite historic sites in Prairie de Richard, Illinois at Fort Deschard. And I got my favorite dessert that we've made on the show, and I got my favorite person in the world, and my favorite <laughs> friends watching. It's a good day. It's going to be a good day, Ron. And I got two birthday presents for you, oh. for you to open up. But first, you have to try your chocolate tart. This is from 1800, the complete confectioner. 200 plus year old recipe. You requested this for your birthday, so I made it for you. I hear you did something a little bit different this time. That's right. I use chocolate that has orange zest mixed with it. I have, I have not tried this before. As you can see, it's not cut into yet. <laughs> so uh, you and me are both going to try this for the first time and see if that was a good idea or not. All right. Well, I'm guessing it was probably a great idea. And it was also your request to come to your favorite place here for it to shard. Yes. Yeah, she said, what do you want to eat on your birthday and where do you want to go? And this was my options. He, he, or my selections, I should he say. He thought, well, I could use this. Hand me your plate. Oh, you're going to serve me? I just need to serve the birthday boy first. Eh, too late. I didn't cut it. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. Every other option requires spending a lot of money. Uh, so Ron decided just to come to the fort. <laughs> Keep it local. Yeah. This is right across the river from us. We live on the Missouri side. I butchered it. I'm sorry. Ron, it looks totally fine to me. <laughs> looks good that's to a, me. That's a big piece. Yeah, maybe because it's, that's a huge piece. I think it's the bigger the piece, the harder it is to get it out without it cracking a little bit. 
Oh, wow, yeah. it looks like chocolate mousse. Oh, shoot, there it goes. Oh, well, it's his birthday. He can do what he wants with his own pie, I guess. <laughs> were you going to hold it up like that? That's what you were going to do? Yeah. Well, that's why it fell apart. This reminds me of my first birthday. It was chocolate cake, and I was oh. making a mess with it. Your first birthday? What do you mean? Like when you were one years old? Yeah, my first birthday, I had chocolate cake. I mean, you I just, have good I just, memory. I just tore into it. Well, there's pictures. Oh, I was going to say. Nobody remembers their first no, birthday. No, I don't. Photographs. <laughs> Okay, birthday boy always gets... Wait, 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 wait. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ronald. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, guys. <laughs> you already got chocolate on your front, too. Do I really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. Okay, right off the bat. I taste the orange. I taste the orange. That's really good. That tastes high class. That's very good. This might be better than the original. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, that was a mm. that was a pretty good idea. <laughs> Great job. This Thank tastes you. fantastic. For a two hundred year old recipe. This is one of the best you're gonna get. Oh yeah. And it really isn't hard to make at all. A lot of modern recipes have so many complicated steps to them that I just don't even begin to attempt it. Mm -hmm. This was a one pot dish. Crust and, is nice, nice and crunchy. Yeah. And then you just pour it into the pie paste and you cook it. Well, you did a fabulous job. Thanks, Ron. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'm not a cake guy. I do like cakes, mm -hmm. but uh, mm. if I can get a pie instead of a cake, I'll do it. I am also team pie. <laughs> are you guys team? No. Are you guys team cake <laughs> or are you team pie? I'm just shoveling this in my face right now. Sorry. It's this really is, good. This is decadent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the orange flavor. I mean, this is such a fun recipe because you can use so many different types of chocolate and make it slightly different every time you make it that's right you could get mint chocolate that'd be pretty good it would be hmm. so our uh sunday chew chats were very short-lived though yeah according <laughs> to the uh analytics or analytics however you want to say it on youtube it shows that most of the traffic on YouTube is on Sunday afternoon and evening, but the numbers that are recently coming in on the videos we put out are saying otherwise, so I think we're going to go back to... Uh, we're going to go back to Wednesdays. Wednesdays, and that'll help everybody get through the week, too, because we, mm -hmm. like, to, we like to hang out with you guys on Wednesday evening, and it's mm -hmm. like, all right, there's only two days left of the week, and then it's over with. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a good thing to have during the middle of the week, I think. We had people that were saying... Oh, you know, I can't make it to your Chew Chat lives because I'm at work, and we felt really bad about it. So we looked into our YouTube page where it tells us, like, the most times people are watching our videos, and it was Sunday. Uh -huh. We tried it for two weeks. It's not working out. So we're just going to go back to Wednesday and say, forget about it. It's just Wednesday forever now. <laughs> <laughs> it's been Wednesday for years and years. We right. tried to change it for two weeks. Didn't work out. We're going back to Wednesdays. Right. Unless there's somebody sick or something, then it might be on a Friday or, or whatever. But Usually it's Wednesdays. But plan on it being Wednesdays for mm -hmm. here on out again. This is so good. This needs like nuts or something in it. Make a whipped cream. That was a lot of work to make back then. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Had to be hand whipped. Hey, you guys like my new hat? Thrift store find. Three dollars. Mm -hmm. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a hat that actually does keep the sun off of you because all these historic hats just seem to be decorative only. Yeah, they don't. Tricorns don't keep the sun off you. A top hat don't keep the sun off you. Not really. Uh, only the flat brimmed hats. And the only other one I have is my felt one. And that thing is super hot when the sun's hitting on it because it's black. It's wool. Yeah. <laughs> so the straw one during the summertime is excellent because my straw tricorn hat that I wear a lot 
feels amazing unless the sun's blasting me in the face then there's no coverage but it mm. breathes and then the black wool hats they don't they don't breathe at all <laughs> so it just gets all hot and sweaty up there that was so good and for a more modern twist i would add coconut to it whoa i just feel like it needs some nut <laughs> <laughs> Coconut was interesting. Mm-hmm. Don't you think it would taste good with coconut? Coconut flakes? I've never had chocolate and coconut together. Yeah, no. you. Almond Joy bars. Okay, I take <laughs> that back. <laughs> I have Not had... period correct, but come on. I know you've had it. <laughs> I do love them. Especially the red ones, the, mm. the mounds. The ones, because the red ones are dark chocolate. Early 1800s, I did actually find uh, a cookbook that has mentions of coconut in it. So they were using coconut, long story, but it was kind of an exotic thing. Not everyone could access to it. Well, that was so rich. I, I, I can't I, eat anymore. I need a minute before I eat another piece. That, I mean, it's all cream and egg yolks in there. It's very good. That is so good, but so rich. You did a great job. Thanks, it's, it's really, really easy to make. You just throw everything together in one pot. <laughs> Stew it up for a couple minutes and then you pour it in a pie shell with some chocolate and you bake it and that's it. Wow. Well, before we get into presents, let me tell you guys a little bit about Fort Richard. Uh, originally in this area here in Prairie Rocher, Illinois, there have been three previous forts to this and they were all wooden. And that's starting about 1720. The stone one you see behind us is a rebuilt version of what came in 1753. In 1753, the French in this area built a stone fort because all the previous ones were getting washed away and destroyed by flood because the, rip, the Mississippi River is like, I don't know, 200 yards behind the fort. Mm -hmm. Like there's, there's the fort, a little bit of a backyard woods, a levee, and then the river. There wasn't a levee then though. No, there was no <laughs> levee then. Fast forward to uh, 1763 after the uh, Seven Years War. Or the French and Indian Wars, we have to call it here in America. After that ends, French, um, they cede their lands here in North America, most of them anyways, to the British. So the British get control of this. They arrive here in 1765, I believe, and they renamed the fort from Fort Deschard to Fort Cavendish. Hmm. Or Cavendish. And they stay here until 1777, I believe, and then they, they abandoned the fort because the river had flooded and eroded so much of the uh, the fort walls away that it became dangerous and it was, you know, it was flood, it floods a flood. And so they, they abandoned the fort. After that, it was left to, to just be ruins. And by the time we get to the 1820s, there are accounts of people coming down here and stealing, I'll call it stealing, stealing the, uh, the stones from the walls for their own construction projects back at their, their home site. And by the time we get to 1900, there's no more walls left. The only thing remaining is the powder magazine. A powder magazine is a building that houses all the powder for the fort. And that is uh, to be the oldest surviving building here in Illinois. Gunpowder, not flower powder. Yes, gunpowder. Gun <laughs> so, boom, boom. That building has been here. It has been refurbished on the roof. They have given it a new roof but it's the original structure. Everything else you see here today has been uh, recreated. In the early 1900s, around 1925 or so, they started building a couple of the structures and they uncovered the foundation walls. And then in the 1980s, they finally had the funds to rebuild the, uh, the fort walls and they built about half of them. So you only see about half of the fort. It's not fully enclosed anymore. When it was fully enclosed in, 17, in the 1750s, it took up four acres. Oh, that's huge. That's big. That's really big for a fort. Yes. And it's it's a massive fort today, even though it's only at half, you know, half the mm -hmm. perimeter of it. And it's it's one of our favorite places to come. Uh, it's quiet out here. Unless they have a big rendezvous here. Then it's twice not quiet. A year. Yeah. <laughs> twice a year they have this big rendezvous here with thousands of people. Oh, yeah. And we come to it. Yes. Yep, it's, it's my favorite place. The first time mm -hmm. I was here was actually like in 1996. I came over, I came across the ferry in St. Jim with my grandparents. And I remember seeing cannons and stuff. And that, that's probably my first interaction with a real historic area was when I was, whatever age I would have been. I would have been like seven maybe. I was born in 88, so you do the math. 
Like, you and me were both coming to this fort before we knew each other. Yeah, we were. I <laughs> have not found any pictures yet of either of us in the background. <laughs> we were both, we both came to the same events, probably on the same day, because they're weekend only things. And we might have walked by each other, but... We might have. I would, Like I said, I was here in 1996 with my grandparents. I did not come back until I got interested in about 2014, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I've been here ever since then, so I know we were both here. But right. did we walk past each other? I don't know. It's. A, I mean, the odds of there being a picture taken at that moment are almost... Next that would be nil. awesome. But that would be incredible. Every time I see <laughs> old fort or ugh, old fort event photos from like 2015, 2016, before we knew each other, mm -hmm. we didn't know each other until 2021. I'm always looking to see if I can spot her or or me or if we're both in the same picture or whatever. That would just be crazy. Like, oh my gosh, I look know. here we are, and we didn't even know. I know that would be pretty. That would be absolutely amazing. I hope we find that picture. But where are the odds, right? It might exist. Who knows? Looks oh. like you got poo poo right there. I know, that's when I was trying to show off my uh, skills of serving a pie. Ron's side of the tablecloth and my side of the tablecloth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about these presents? Okay. You said I got presents. They've been sitting in our room for the last three weeks and Ron's just been looking at them, but he's not been allowed to open it. And I apologize, I didn't really wrap it. She didn't wrap it at all, I, not really. I did not <laughs> wrap it. Oh, my glasses just came out. My pocket will. Heck, I might as well put them on. <laughs> yeah, so you can see. Yeah, so I can see. Yeah, plot twist, I actually am blind as a bat. It's true. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> no, oh. That's There's your present. <laughs> um, so here you go. Which one should I open first? Honestly, they're both they're both the same Okay, so it doesn't thing. matter which one gets first? Yeah, it really doesn't matter. All right. Just, it says, do not bend. Yeah, do not bend. Be very it's careful. from Italy. Fragile. Fragile. <laughs> what is that, the Christmas story? Yeah. The birthday boy is opening his birthday present. I think you're going to like it. I, I think you're going to like it a lot. I always like them. <laughs> you give great presents. No, oh, thanks. I I do try to really get to know someone's personality when I give them a present. <laughs> I mean, I know that there's people out there that'll just give you generic stuff. Like, here's a toaster. Here's, here's a, some towels. Here's a gift card to Walmart. <laughs> exactly. Get your own present, basically. But I, I never do that. I always try to know the person's personality. Because if I'm giving you presents, it means I know you. Right. So if I know you, I'm going to give you something that I know that you like. Guaranteed you'll like that or your money back. Let me go ahead and move this out of the way because this chocolate can be real messy. Ooh. What have we here? <sighs> Show the crowd, Ronald. All right, let me take off the uh, the receipts in there. It's blocking it. <laughs> this is cool. Giving people gifts is fun. <laughs> Give me a minute. I'm working on it. They, yeah, there's they, some plastic covering they've it. They've got it taped, and I'm trying to be very yeah, it's, gentle with the knife it's here. paper. That's the hint for you guys. It's a... Woo, that's a big old bug. Oh, there's a spider? Go away. That did not come with the present. <laughs> I hope not. Okay. Yeah. This one is the Federal Gazette from Baltimore. So it's historical advertisements. Ron, that is an original newspaper. Wait, this is original? That is an original newspaper from the 18th century. Oh, wow. I thought this was reproduction. No way. I want to give you reproduction on your birthday. Oh, man. That is an original newspaper from the 18th century. What year does it say on it? It is from September 15th, 1798. That is neat. Thank you. Yeah. It's in really great shape for her original. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I thought it was a, a reproduction. Nope, it's the real deal. That is cool. I, I won't, it's really windy here today. Uh, I won't, I'll leave this in and I'll, when we get home, I'll open it up and, okay. and fiddle with it. Okay, it should be the, basically the whole newspaper. Wow, There's... I can't wait to read it. I, I love seeing Jebediah's got cattle for sale for three dollars or, or, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or looking for a good fast horse. Or... Yeah, that is fascinating to me too, the everyday lives of people. I know you're going to love it, but I'm going to be sitting there right on with you trying to look at it too. Well, let's see what this one is. Yep. Now i got to be extra careful with this knife going Please. in Please! That's why I moved the chocolate away. Oh my gosh. 
Thank you so much, man. Yeah, no problem. I, I've uh, started collecting, I don't want to say I collect newspapers, but this starts it, but literature is the word for it. Old books. Old books, old newspapers like this, old prints. Yeah. Like um, fashion plates, stuff like that. I collect old books, personally. Uh, I don't even know how many we're up to. Oh. Over 10. Yeah, we're over 10. That are pre-1830. Drum roll. Where is this one from? Let's see. Oh, they got a bunch of stuff. I can't read where it's from. Yeah, you're going to have to kind of take all the advertisements off of the advertisement. Yeah, very carefully again. Hmm. Dissect it. This is another original newspaper. Um, yeah, it's currently covered by something, so I can't quite tell you the year yet. All I know is it's time to sharpen these knives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been time. Oh, wait, here we go. Now I see an easy way to get it. I'm glad that I brought a knife and not scissors, because scissors wouldn't have worked, really. How much tape they got on this thing? I wish they didn't have that much tape, to be honest. It, it makes it dangerous. It does make it dangerous to hmm. try to get this undone, because you got to manhandle it. I'm trying to be as careful as I can. I mean, it's in excellent condition. I, I don't think it's going to turn to dust. On the front, I'm already looking at, at an advertisement for sugar candy. Oh, are you? Yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, come on. And now. lead manufacturing. I'm trying my best, guys. There you go. Okay. Show them what you got, Ronald. All right, let's see here. This is the mail of Claypool's daily advertis advertiser. Adver advertiser, Saturday, April 7th, 1792. Let's read off one here. Cheap bread bags of good quality and well made for sale by John Malagohani. Bread bags? Bread bags. What are bread bags? I don't know. We'll have to do research about that later. It doesn't say how much they are. Bread bags. It just says they're cheap. That's how they get you in the door. Groceries for sale. <laughs> uh, a month which is the met is uh, some uh, some of France coffee and mat. That uh, doesn't make sense. What can I see? Yeah, it's really small print and it's, you're trying to read it through the shiny plastic and it's got the old timey F's. Coffee? Oh. They're selling coffee. Yeah, but... it's an advertisement It says groceries for sale, among which is some from France coffee sold in mats. 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 I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a brick of coffee. Maybe. Maybe, I'm not quite sure. This is really cool, hon. Thank you. Oh, a ball. There's an advertisement for a ball. Oh. Right there. Oh, huh. James Robardet respectfully informs the ladies and gentlemen of this city that his ball will be held on Tuesday the 10th something at Mr. O.L.'s house in Chester Street. The ladies who are acquainted with the parents of his pupils will be gratefully supplied with tickets by making application to them. <laughs> That's really neat. Yeah, this is gonna be so fun to look through. Yes. Um, oh. I believe that one or both of them does make mention of George Washington. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's why I actually got them. <laughs> <laughs> I love gifts that you can use. We can use this, and it's a neat novelty it's collector's item. Yes, okay, educational. Here you go. Here's your gift. Thank, thank you very I much. I got it for you, but I'm the one who's staring at it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> uh, two, your gifts have already arrived. Oh, okay. Ron's birthday is on August 21st. Mine's on September 21st. Exactly a month apart. So the question is, what should I cook for her on her <laughs> birthday? And, hmm. uh, yeah. One of your presents is still on its way from France, by the way. What? From 
From France. France? Well, from that France. just sounds bougie. I mean, it could be something for five dollars, but already it's amazing because it's from France. It could right? be. It could just be a <laughs> stick of bubble gum from France, but it's from France. I'll enjoy every stick and every chew. Well, anyways, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for wishing me a happy birthday. I really appreciate it. Uh, you guys make the world go round, and each year it just it, it just gets funner and funner and it funner does. and funner. It and does. thank you, Justine, so much for making the lovely pie and for the wonderful gifts. No I cannot problem. wait to look at them when we get home. I know, I can't wait so, either. <laughs> so thank you, guys. We'll uh, start seeing you again on Wednesdays next week on Early American and on Frontier Patriot. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. We love you. Take care. And happy birthday, Ron. Thank you.